Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about the skills, abilities, and techniques that you need to pass your driver's test first time. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Welcome to the live stream for tonight. Every week we have a live stream at Sunday at 6 p.m. Tell your friends, tell anybody you know that is going for a driver's test, want to be a safer, smarter driver or start a career as a truck or bus driver because that's what we do here. My friend Tim is here from Drive Smart BC. Be sure to check out Tim's website. Excellent information over there if you live in the province of British Columbia, Canada. Anything to do with the courts, traffic safety, roads, why they're built, how they're built, <laughs> safety features and whatnot, and as well an excellent forum. So be sure to check out Drive Smart BC. Ruben is here to everyone who is going to take the driver's license test. Be careful because other drivers will sound their horn in an effort to mess you up, like what a lady almost did. So yes, unfortunately not all drivers are nice. We're gonna talk about social driving, the hallmarks of social driving, the hallmarks of other people. So we'll get all of that into place. <clears throat> Uh, Dark Sied, hello, David is here, Mallory, hello my friend, Bricks for Wheels, Corey, Corey is the moderator, Corey does an excellent job of getting up the videos that I suggest you have a look at for more details on the answers I give you to the questions. My friend Mallory is here, Mallory asks what is the most common mistake on shoulder checks and I would say as long as you're not committing an act that causes an automatic outright fail on your driver's test, the most common error is not shoulder checking. Okay, you have to shoulder check for the purposes of a driver's test. And as well, as I say, you have to shoulder check throughout your driving career to keep yourself safe, to keep others on the roadway safe, because not shoulder checking when driving is the same thing as not checking to see whether their weapon is loaded is to gun safety. So I cannot stress that enough. Shoulder check, shoulder check, shoulder check. Uh, David is here. David, uh, from England, he moved to the state of Ohio in the United States. Unfortunately, let his license lapsed and uh, now has to redo his license after 33 years of driving and is my age, 55 years old. Uh, peace, how long do I have to study for the test? Uh, which test are you studying for? Are you studying for the written test or are you studying for the on-road test? Let me know there in the comments. Kim, hello, my friend. Cecilia, second time I'll be doing my driver's test. I hope I pass this time. Uh, I've been doing it in Westminster, BC. So you're here on the west coast of Canada as well. And Corey's put up the video on shoulder checking. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Cecilia says, study until you feel comfortable to go for the test on the computer. Yes, and the other thing is, if you are studying for the learner's test, <clears throat> excuse me, do not, <laughs> read the driver's manual from cover to cover. It is boring. <laughs> it's written by bureaucrats. It is not interesting. So if you're going for the driver's test, find the practice driving test questions online. Use those as a measure of your skills and ability, and then go back to the driver's handbook and look up the sections that you don't know. And that will help you out and then read those sections go back and do the tests again and then try them again when you're getting kind of 80 to 90 percent consistently on the different tests then you're ready to go to the dmv and write the test there uh p says uh, you're doing the on-road driving test i i know for a fact that you know you need six to eight weeks of driving time to be able to go and be comfortable doing your on-road test as well I encourage you strongly to take at least one lesson with a driving instructor if you're not already taking driver training with a driving instructor because they will take you on the test routes. They say they're not, but they do take you on the test routes because they know where they are. They will show you where they do the three-point turns, the two-point reverse turns. Uh, if they're doing them in at the DMV, sometimes they will do that if they're doing uh, parking parallel parking between cones and whatnot. So they will show you all of the nuances of the specific test. I can give you general information and good information about passing your driver's test, but a driving instructor will be, give, be able to give you the specific information about your driving test center and know that every driving test center is different in every state. 
<laughs> okay? So if you're in Cincinnati, Ohio, and taking your test in one of the suburbs there, it's going to be different. That test will be different than what it is in the Toledo, Ohio, which is in the north. So know that, okay? So I cannot stress this enough. If you are not taking driver training with an instructor, be sure that you take at least one lesson with a driving instructor to get the details and the nuance of the driving test and that way you're going to be successful. There is no better investment of your time and energy and money than getting a driving lesson with a driving instructor if you're not already taking uh, driver training, okay? Exile, uh, we make more videos on what to do in emergency unexpected situations. Okay, I will do that. I was actually watching a video the other day of one of my competitors and uh, he was saying that yellow lights are unexpected and this is really great stuff for me because if you're thinking that it's unexpected then that's kind of how I have to teach you. That's how I have to change my teaching so that you can. we're both kind of on the same page when I'm trying to help you out. All right, one other thing that I want to talk about. <laughs> This is kind of, this is a personal thing, but it's not something I can hide. Uh, I have mild, I don't know, my, my doctor said it was cancer, I don't know, on my nose. It's nothing serious, it just, it makes my nose turn no, purple and blue. So if I'm in the video and my nose looks blue and purple, I'm okay. I didn't get frostbite or anything like that. Uh, it's just, uh, I have a skin issue on my nose and, you know, Unfortunately, I wish it was somewhere else in my body that I could hide it, but it's right on my beak. <laughs> I can't hide it. So I appreciate everybody's concerns and the comments about my nose. It's okay. Uh, I'm not, you know, it's not terminal or anything like that. It's just one of those things of life of getting older that happens to our body. So there we go. Okay. Uh, Kiana. Alton, Texas, hello, very blessed for your videos and courses and pressured to get my license soon, but being practicing a lot, just don't want to kill anyone. Uh, no, I don't think you are. You're the right mindset, the right attitude. You're gonna get the information and skills and abilities you need to be successful and be safe on the roadway. So you're doing the right thing. Uh, JP, definitely noticed lots of people in Metro van driving around blindly, tons of lane changes without shoulder checking and signaling, thanks to the defensive driving package, I'm more confident around them, that's awesome JP. And we'll talk a little bit more about social driving and the, the challenges you face when you are driving. So, uh, Tim says, I see a lot of drivers in Winnipeg with snow covering their rear windows and signals. <laughs> yeah, Tim. Uh, when I drive, when we've had snow and I see, I drive around and I see people driving around with their vehicles and they have like a little peephole out the front windshield. I'm just like, uh, really, you don't have mitts or a brush or anything like that to clean off your vehicle. Uh, people, you know, driving, they're pretty predictable. So when people say things are unexpected in driving, there's a lot of things in driving that really don't, they don't phase me anymore because it's just what people do when they're driving. So that's, that's what happens. All right, so let's get over to the presentation. So what we'll do is get to the presentation. I'll spend about 10 minutes on the presentation. We'll come back and the remainder of the time will be to answer any questions you about have about driving, uh, being a smarter, safer driver on the roadways and uh, starting a career as a truck or bus driver will answer all of those questions as well. So we'll get over here to the road uh, test skills that you need, the skills and abilities and techniques that you need to have in place to pass your driver's test. Okay, for those of you who are new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. I was a truck driver in the 1990s hauling freight between Canada and the United States, mostly in the east from Ontario down into everything, all the states east of the Mississippi in the United States. Did make it out west a few times, but not a whole lot. Uh, drove buses in Greyhound while I was going to graduate school at the University of Melbourne in Australia. Uh, became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. Uh, graduated with my doctorate in legal history in 2006 with my, an expertise in legal history, which is the study of policing, courts, and prisons. My expertise is in policing as it relates to traffic, oddly enough. And if you want to know more about me, uh, more details, you can read my autobiography over at the Smart Drive Test website there. And, uh, you know, even some funny anecdotes, little storytelling, it always makes things a little bit more interesting. And this week, uh, a couple weeks ago, I went out and froze my butt off for you. 
<laughs> actually tried to get the camera to work because even the camera refused to work uh, when I was outside in minus 25 degrees Celsius weather, which is about minus 13, 14 degrees Fahrenheit. It was very brisk here for two, about you know 15 days here. It was really cold. So show you how to start a push button car. I got a newer car, 2016 Audi uh, S4. Lovely car my girlfriend has, Tracy. And uh, showed you how to get that started in extreme cold weather and a couple of other tips if you are driving in extreme cold weather and it is cold for a period of time, make sure you keep your engine, uh, keep the fuel tank full so that you don't get condensation inside the tank that's going to freeze and freeze up your fuel lines and fuel system and whatnot. The fundamentals of a driver's test. The problem that you're dealing with social driving, which we were talking about, about people not cleaning the snow off their vehicles, is called social driving. People speed, follow too close, fail to give the right of way, don't stop at the correct stopping position at stop signed intersections, don't signal when they're changing lanes, don't shoulder check. This is all under the rubric of social driving. This is how other people drive after they get their license. Your job getting your license is you have to drive in a different manner than what everybody else is doing on the road, more or less. Speed management is number one. If you're not near anything, it's less likely that you're going to hit something. So you have to maintain a three to four second following distance, which means you shouldn't be using the brake at all other than for unexpected events or bringing the vehicle to a stop. Stopping in the correct stopping positions at uh, controlled intersections, lights and signs, uh, not entering intersections you can't clear, and there's one more, oh, three feet from pedestrians, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Okay, speed management, the speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less, observation, forward scanning pattern, 360 degree scan before you reverse, and then shoulder checking twice for turns and anytime you're going to change lanes or move the vehicle sideways. And then communication is the last one, and we'll talk more in detail about that here just in a little bit. Road signs. Road signs give you information about the roads and areas that you're on and how the roadway is going to change. If you're reading road signs, you're going to be actively engaged in your driving. So know the road signs. One of the automatic fails on a driver's test is speeding in a school zone. So know in and around the test centers where the school zones are going to be that will allow you to be successful on your driver's test and not fail for speeding in a school zone stopping speeding merging basic right of way all of these signs are there and they are going to help you to be proactive they are grouped into categories and if you learn what the road signs are cautionary signs regulatory signs stop signs and whatnot you will be able to glean the information from them at a glance. So know your road signs. Space management, stopping position at intersections and traffic, stopping before the stop line, before the crosswalk or sidewalk. And if those two conditions don't exist, then just before you enter the intersection. Following distance, three to four seconds. You shouldn't be using your brake while you're driving down the road in a straight line unless you're coming into a curve or there's an unexpected event or you're bringing the vehicle to a stop. That is how you measure your following distance. You can't be closer than three feet to pedestrians. And Corey will put the video up for you on how far from pedestrians. And I've done a whole video on that for pedestrian safety because that is another automatic fail. If you charge pedestrians on a left or right turn, automatic fail on a driver's test. <clears throat> and the other piece about pedestrians is if they're going away from you, you need a half a lane between your vehicle and the pedestrians. And if they're coming towards you, you need one lane or more, depending on how fast they're traveling, how fast you're traveling in the different, <clears throat> excuse me, configurations of the intersection. Sorry about that. Uh, speed management, posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. And when can you drive slower? In the winter time right now, if the roads are rough because you've had melting, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, melting and you've got rough ice and roads and those types of things, we've got a lot of that out here where we live, then you can definitely drive a bit slower. If you're in a, a playground area but there's no speed signs, then you can drive a bit slower. If you have heavy pedestrian traffic, then yes, you can drive a bit slower. These are just some of the different scenarios in which you can drive slower. 
That slide is tenacious. Observation, scanning patterns. You need a forward scanning pattern, which is looking far down the road, in, check your center mirror, far down the road, both shoulders, in, check your instrument panel, far down the road, and then check either one of your wing mirrors. And this is your rotating scanning pattern every 10 to 15 seconds. If you're not adjusting your speed every 10 to 15 seconds, that tells the driving examiner that you are not scanning properly because as part of your scanning pattern, you should be checking your speed every eight, uh, eight to kind of 15 seconds and adjusting that. Shoulder checks when you're turning, shoulder checks uh, when you're moving the vehicle sideways. You have to backing, you have to do a 360 degree scan. You have to look out the back window, even if you have a backup camera. You can look at it, you can use it, but you, for the majority of your backing, you have to be looking out the back window. Changing lanes and merging. Again, three minimum three flashes on the signal. Remember, again, social driving. Most people don't signal. For you, for the purposes of a driver's test, you need minimum three flashes on the signal before you start changing directions of the vehicle or moving it sideways. The reason you have three flashes, the first one is to get other road users' attention. The second flash is for them to locate you. And the third flash is, by that time, it allows other road users to take some sort of action. Either they're going to speed up and get in front of you or they're going to slow down and create a space for you in which you can merge. And how many times I've had students in the vehicle and say, oh, other traffic won't let me move over or let me merge and those types of things. And oftentimes I just say to them, uh, you know, try turning on your signal. Uh, because as we say, lots of people don't do it. And remember what we say about right of way rules, you can be right or you can be dead right. Sometimes you just have to let your foot off the throttle and let other road users go and have their crash somewhere else. Communication, position of the vehicle or road user on the roadway or in relationship to the roadway. And what I mean by that, if a pedestrian is standing near a crosswalk, there's a good chance that pedestrian is gonna push the button, they're going to cross the road. If a vehicle is in a left turning lane, there's a good chance that that vehicle is going to turn left. Lights and signals, your headlights, your uh, turning signals, brake lights, and to get people's attention, if they're coming up behind you too fast, you can tap your brakes and that will flash your brake lights and get their attention. Horn, we use the horn sparingly in this day and age. Uh, eye contact, if you have a pedestrian standing at an intersection, you could tap your horn and get their attention and then get eye contact with them or wave them on or those types of things. And if you are using hand gestures, make sure you use all five fingers. Don't tell them they're number one on a driver's test. And never ever assume that another road user has seen you because maybe they didn't. All right, so your job on a driver's test, your job on a driver's test is to take away the examiner's right to fail you. Nothing less, nothing more. Demonstrate that you have due care and control of the vehicle in changing traffic conditions. And the driving examiner's job uh, is to, oh, sorry, that's not the right one. <laughs> uh, if you're going to do a practice drive, a practice road test, as I said, book them out about three weeks because they're going to be extremely busy uh, and book it seven to 10 days before your driver's test. And, you know, because if you don't take a driver's test and you fail your driver's test and you got to rebuild your confidence, you got to find time to practice and you got to go and do it again. And you know, it's kind of a pain in the butt. You just wanna do it once, you wanna get it over with, and you wanna get on with your life, okay? And as I said, you can take a practice road test with a local driving instructor and he or she will take you out and give you a mock driving test and assess your abilities and skills and say, listen, hey, you need to tighten up your shoulder checking a little more, you need to do more shoulder checking, you need to be more observant when you're driving and those types of things. So remember, pick the best answer. Not necessarily the right answer. And good luck on your driver's test. All right, get back over here. There we go. <clears throat> Safety comes first. Yes, you are absolutely correct about that. But there's certain skills and abilities and techniques that you can put in place when you're driving that will definitely ensure that you're going to be safe on the roadways. And Tyler says, make sure you don't use your phone for while driving because cops today were biz busting people for using them. Yes. And one of the things that I say about your cell phones and one of the things that has been extremely helpful in my vehicle was getting a holder for my phone because if I need to use it for navigation or whatnot, I can just set it before I leave, just put it on the holder and I can just glance over at it 
uh, before we take off. So that's something that I would strongly encourage that you get. I mean, it's relatively inexpensive. It's only about 25 bucks for a holder for your phone. And uh, you just get in and mine's magnetic. So it just slaps on the holder and stays there. Uh, Kenya, uh, you should write a book on what is not covered in the driver's manual. The blind gray areas, but they are very helpful. All summed up content from all your videos and experience. And yes, that's a good, uh, <laughs> a good suggestion. Thank you so much for that. And uh, yeah, that's probably something I could do and put up for sure. And because uh, I am working on a book right now called The Psychology of Driving, which is basically people's attitudes towards driving, and it was it's it's kind of a deep deep dive into driving and how people feel about driving but this is more kind of a nuts and bolts book uh, that would definitely help new people out for sure so yeah I'll give that some thought thank you for that suggestion <clears throat> and as Ruben said people do honk people will do all kinds of unkind things to you while you're driving honk at you, hand, rude hand gestures, those types of things, because the pressure of driving is very real. And other, you know, hurry up and go. And for new drivers, that's one of the toughest things is this, you know, what am I trying to say? Is to resist that temptation because this is, you know, one of the things that I would like, that I would put forth is that the reason that new drivers get into trouble is because they do things that they shouldn't do because other they feel the pressure from other drivers who are saying, oh, you need to hurry up and go on that left turn. You're not going when you should be going. And then the driver goes and they don't have sufficient gap and they get T-boned in the intersection. And usually this is what happens with new drivers. If they're going to get into a crash, it's usually going to be on a left turn because they misjudge the gap because... And it's not because they didn't have the skills and abilities to be able to do it, but they got pressured by other traffic to go when they shouldn't have gone. So this is one of the things is for new drivers, you need to focus on what you're doing, not what you think other people should be thinking that you're doing, right? And unfortunately, it's an extra, it's, you know, it's a social activity. Driving is a social activity and you have to work within that community of drivers on the roadway. And as I said, it's social driving. All the hallmarks of social driving are in place, right? People don't signal. People follow too close. They speed, those types of things. So what you're doing in terms of being a safer, smarter driver and what you're doing in terms of getting your license, all of that ties into you not doing what everybody else is doing on the roadway to keep yourself safe. Uh, Sarah, do you have any any videos on overnight parking? Uh, no, I don't have any videos on overnight parking. That's one of the things that I don't. Uh, what is it that you're looking for, Sarah, in terms of overnight parking videos? Uh, Mallory and Halifax this week, they caught two people for stunting, so speeding, it's not worth it. Uh, it's cold here in Nova Scotia today. Uh, stunting, is that when they're doing more than 30 kilometers an hour over the speed limit? Mallory, is that what that is? Uh... Wendy, good evening. If I already have a CDL but want air brakes, is it that I only ha need the air brakes and not the knowledge? Okay, so Wendy, just to clarify what you're asking me, you already have a CDL license. You're driving something like a school bus that just has hydraulic brakes on it, but now you need your CDL license, but you need your air brake endorsement to be able to operate a CDL vehicle that has air brakes. Is that, what, is that correct, what you're asking me? I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Just looking at other comments there, making sure I answered everybody's comment. So the other thing about taking a driver's test uh, is that most of the time, most of the examiners are going to be, you know, they're not really going to say anything in the vehicle. Some of them might talk to you, but for the most part, I encourage you when you get in the vehicle and you're doing your driver's test, don't engage in conversation with the examiner unless he or she engages in conversation with you. Oftentimes, driving examiners will engage in conversation with you after kind of the halfway point of the driver's test. And the reason they do that is because, you know, they're pretty confident that you've passed, you're doing well uh, on the test, and uh, they're comfortable with your driving and those types of things. So you've done your job at that point. Uh, you know, really focus on what you're doing. 
one of the things I know with new drivers is that if they get into complex driving situations, moving through intersections and those types of things, then you have to be quiet because they're focusing on what they're doing when they're moving through the intersection, whether they're turning left or turning right, because it's a lot going on, right? It's a complex action and they just like kind of focus in on what they're doing. And if you can do that when you learn how to drive, if you can focus in on the task when you're turning left or turning right and need a lot of, you know, focus on that, then tune the other people out and you don't have to respond. And if the examiner says something and you didn't hear what he or she said, you can just ask them to repeat themselves and say, sorry, I didn't hear that. I was busy focusing on what I was doing there. They'll very much appreciate that. Anybody who's with you is going to appreciate that for sure. Uh, peace, I crashed into another car backing up at night, really dark. Yes, and the other thing, uh, if you're the least bit unsure of what's going on, it's not, you don't look like a bad driver if you get out and look at the area that you're going to be backing into to prevent those backup crashes because there is a lot of stuff going on when you're backing up as well. We're not designed and vehicles aren't designed to be backing up. So sometimes you just need to get out of the vehicle and have a look around uh, before you back up. Dark side, uh, do you have any advice for people who will be using a large vehicle for their G2 road test? Uh, yes, take your time. Uh, there's a video here as well on the channel about parallel parking with a large vehicle. So that'll help you out. Uh, just know that it's going to be a little bit tougher because the spaces, you know, getting that vehicle into a space is going to be a bit more challenging. So what I would suggest to you, if you're taking a large vehicle like a van or a pickup truck, make sure that you practice with that vehicle in a parking lot and are able to maneuver it around and do slow speed maneuvers and those types of things. Uh, make sure that you're able to do your three point turns and whatnot because it is a bit more challenging because you don't have as much space because you have a bigger vehicle. Uh, so that's what I would suggest to you. Uh, Mallory, yes, but what uh, that is what stunting is. It is when you go a lot over the speed limit, like more than 30 kilometers an hour. Yeah, we have that here as well, where they can impound your vehicle if you're caught doing more than 30 kilometers an hour over the speed limit. Uh, Wendy, I drive a school bus and now want to drive a coach bus, so I'm worried how many tests I have to take or study for. Uh, Wendy, as far as I know, you just have to take the air brake portion. You've already got your CDL. So you just have to get your air brake portion and uh, to help you out with the air brakes, we do have air brakes explained simply. It's a uh, ebook over at the Smart Drive Test website that I wrote and that will help you out to make sure as well. There's a hundred practice test questions in that for the air brakes. And uh, if you have difficulty accessing those, just send me an email, rick at Smart Drive Test and I'll give you access to them uh, on the website there. So hundred practice driving test questions plus the Pre-trip inspection for a single unit like a school bus is, is all broken down exactly what you need to do to do that pre-trip inspection and to be able to pass your air brakes first time, okay? My friend Sam from New York, how are you, my friend? <laughs> how is winter in the Bronx? <laughs> uh, Corey's put up a number of videos there as well. Have a look through those and pick the one that you need uh, for any topic that you might need more information about about passing your driver's test. Uh, Wendy, and thank you for your videos. They have helped a great deal while I study the New Jersey DMV CDL book. Uh, Wendy, you're most welcome. Happy to be able to help out, that's for sure. And like I said, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email and I'll be able to help you out and whatnot. Jacob, I have a question. How can you pass your driving test without being nervous? Uh, Jacob, you're always going to be nervous when you're taking a test, especially when somebody else is sitting in a seat this far away from you, this far away from you and they're critiquing you, you're gonna be nervous. You're gonna to have to overcome that. One of the things that I suggest to new drivers who are preparing for their road test, if they have time, is to try and get in the vehicle with different people that you haven't worked with before. And that way, it gives you experience knowing what other people are going to do or what other people are going to say or those types of things because you're always gonna be nervous when you go for a driver's test. The other thing that I tell drivers who are going for a driving test is make sure you breathe okay make sure in through the nose out through the mouth in four six seven i think somebody was saying the other day in four hold it for six and then out for seven and that'll cause your body to relax because breathing gives you something to focus on and it causes your body to relax but know that you're going to be nervous the other piece about 
your driving test when you're nervous, know that the first five minutes is going to be the hardest. So just hold the first five minutes together. If you can get through the first five minutes and everything goes well, the examiner's going to relax, you're going to relax, and then it's going to be fine for the remainder of the driver's test. So that's some tips, some of the tips that you can use to be less nervous for your driver's test. But everybody's, you know, going to be up at night. They're going to be thinking about their driving test, uh, not going to get some sleep. They're not going to eat and those types of things. But just know that it's going to be great and visualize the win. Visualize passing your driver's test. Crystal, uh, good evening. Best advice for parallel parking. Uh, Crystal put up the, uh, Corey will put up the video for you on parallel parking. But uh, a lot of mistakes that people, new drivers make when they're learning how to parallel park. First of all, they're not three feet from the vehicle that they're trying to parallel park off. So imagine a person standing between your vehicle and the other vehicle. That's how you kind of measure that distance between the other vehicle. And then pick your 45 degree angle out, which is gonna be just kind of where the mirror is at the A pillar there. Uh, pick out your 45 and then, sorry, I'll back up again. <laughs> so you pull up, you're three feet from the vehicle beside you, put the vehicle into reverse and make sure that your rear, the rear of the vehicles are lined up and then pick your 45 back around until you're facing that into the space and then around and into the space. And it, it's practice. It's one of those things that just needs practice. But if you can work with an instructor, a driving instructor, he or she will be able to help you out so that you can do that. But again, it's just one of those things. And the other thing that will help you with parallel parking is slow speed maneuvers. If you can get some pylons, you can go and work in a parking lot, driving around corners, getting comfortable with the steering wheel, with the, thro the accelerator and the brake as well. All of that will improve your parallel parking skills. But oftentimes I find with new drivers, if I do the slow speed maneuvers in the parking lot and then I go out, it usually only takes them half a dozen times of parallel parking and they've got it down. And the last piece about the parallel parking for the purposes of the driver's test is don't freak out. I mean, if you're 12 inches from the curb or you think you're too far from the curb, that's fine, okay? Take five points and then carry on with it, okay? Because we're not going for perfection on our driver's test. We're just going to pass so we can get our license and then you can work on it after you get your driver's license. Uh, Wendy, thank you for the offer. Will the new laws affect me in getting the air brakes if I can get my permit before the 7th of February? Okay, so they're bringing some new legislation into the state of New Jersey. Is that what you're saying, Wendy? Are they bringing the mandatory uh, training, entry-level training into New Jersey as well? Because I know they brought it here in where I live. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me that they're bringing it in there. Uh... Evan, the only instance on driving tests where the yellow light isn't the same as a red light is if you're already a car length or two from the intersection, your speed is too high for you to stop. Uh, Evan, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, if, you know, essentially what's, you know, and this is the interesting piece about the video that I was watching that yellow lights are unexpected. Sometimes you'll be right on the intersection and the, the light will turn yellow. But essentially what you don't want to happen on a driver's test is going through the intersection and the examiner looks up through the top of the window and the light goes red. If the light goes red, that means that you failed your driver's test because you just ran a red light. You need to practice enough. I mean, the other thing about yellow lights on driver's test, if you get caught out on a, on a yellow light in a driving test and you don't know how to handle it, in my mind, that says that you don't have enough driving experience because if you've done enough driving, you'll hit three or four yellow lights where you're going to have to make that decision. And in my experience with students, it only takes a couple of times with the yellow light where they can figure out after that, okay, I need either need to stop or I need, either need to go. But it's as Evan said, if you're one vehicle length from the intersection and the light goes yellow, you have to go through, okay? Because you can't get the vehicle stopped. But if you're farther back than that, you're gonna have to make the decision that you're gonna have to come to a stop. But again, it comes down to experience. It comes down to the amount of time you've been driving because there's a lot of things that you may never experience when you're learning how to drive. Winter driving, for example, unless you learn how to drive in the winter, you're probably never gonna experience winter driving. Uh, yellow lights, night driving, 
<laughs> driving in the rain. All of this is about experience of driving. So if some of this stuff is, un is unexpected, like yellow lights, yellow lights aren't expected. <laughs> the traffic light goes from green to yellow to red. So I'm not sure how, how a yellow light is unexpected. It catches you unawares, but it's not unexpected. I could, you know, I can count on light traffic lights going yellow <laughs> however many times a day through a cycle or a rotation that they do that. So it's not something that's unexpected, but it will catch you unawares. So know that for the purpose of your driver's test. Uh, Stevie, um, I got into the garbage company in California. Stevie, that is absolutely awesome. That was something you were working towards, I believe, was it, my friend? Uh, Peter, hello. Uh, I learned a lot from you and I passed my road test first time in Winnipeg. I'm telling you now again, thank you for your free lesson. Uh, Peter, you are most welcome and thank you for stopping back and letting us know that you passed your driver's test. Absolutely awesome, my friend. Congratulations on passing there in Winnipeg. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Ken, thank you so much for letting us know. The compliment there. Uh, I watched your videos and passed the written and road test on the first time. Brilliant. Awesome, my friend. And Evan, the only instance to press down on the clutch before completely braking is if you're on a hill. Otherwise, using the clutch shall be used last as the clutch isn't meant to stop the car. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, Corey's put up the video on learn to drive faster by hitting the cone. So working and doing slow speed maneuvers in a parking lot. Okay, uh, thank you. So, Wendy... Where did that go, Wendy? Wendy, yes, they're bringing the mandatory entry level training into the state of New Jersey. That's interesting. I'll have to have a look at that. Um, Wendy, do you have any information on that that you could send me or a link or something? Because that would be really great to know. I probably just Google it and find out, but um, it's good to know that information. Uh, Epic, in some jurisdictions, you are required to clean your car for the road test. If not, uh, you get the test canceled for not meeting that criteria for US CDL after February 7th. Entry training is required. Uh, okay, so Epic for US CDL, is this federal? Is this across all 50 states in the US that they're now bringing in mand mandatory entry level training there? Or is this just in the state of New Jersey? Because uh, I know you're in, Jer in New Jersey there. Uh, Kenya, when I'm doing, when I'm driving, there are some maneuvers I do too slow and some too fast. How can I know how to judge different driving scenarios and drive according to safety? Uh, Kenya, that is just experience. You know, most of the time when you're driving, you're going to be driving the posted speed limit. There's going to be other situations. For example, when you're going past pedestrians, you're going to have to slow down a little bit, you know, so that there's that safety buffer there because most of the time it's space between you and other road users, but sometimes it's the amount of speed too. So the closer you are to something else on the road, whether that's a road user, a vehicle, a bicycle, a cyclist, a bicycle and a cyclist are the same thing, but <laughs> you know, somebody on a scooter or whatnot, the closer you are, the slower you wanna be going, right? It's the same thing as when you go into your garage. You're not gonna be going really fast into your garage because it's super tight, right? Because the door is not that big, much bigger than your car. So you need to be going slower. And so as the environment, the traffic environment gets closer to your vehicle, the slower you should be going. That's what you need to be doing for your purposes of your driver's test. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tim, you need to be like me when you get older. Uh, you never pass up going to the toilet. You always take your time and go to the toilet. So <laughs> uh, you'll need to figure that out on your own. I can't comment on that. Uh, Epic, the one that one is for the entire United States since it's under the Federal Motor Carriers. Uh, Motor Vehicle Commission has the link to it for the federal. Okay, so I'm going to have to have a look at that and get teed up on that for sure. Thank you for that, Epic. I appreciate that information. Crystal, how are you, my friend? I see you've popped in here. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and Stevie, yes, and you were working towards that job with the... Uh, the garbage company there in California. That is brilliant. Congratulations, my friend, on getting that job, landing that job. And uh, how is the work? How are you finding it so far? Are you <laughs> finding some challenges with your new job? Uh, Mallory, when you are taking your driver's test, you should have a driver's commentary so that you understand what you are doing on the driver's test. And yes, the tip that Mallory just gave, and I give this to students all the time, is have a running commentary. Because as adult learners, 
we learn faster and retain more information if we're doing the skill that we're learning and we're talking about it at the same time. So for example, if you're coming up to a intersection, you're saying, oh, it's a complex intersection, there's a left-hand turning lane, there's pedestrians on the left side of the road that I have to watch out for because I'm gonna be turning right and they're coming across the roadway. I'm stopping back so I can see the tires of the vehicle in front making clear contact with the pavement. If you're doing this running commentary, as Mallory said, you are going to retain more information and you are going to learn faster as you're talking through what you're doing. Some people call it talking to themselves and those types of things. And no, you're not crazy when you're doing this. Actually, it is a valuable skill, a valuable learning skill for adults that will help you to learn faster. The other piece about this, and I encourage students to do this while they're on their driver's test as well, talk through what you're doing or on a driving lesson because if you're doing that with me, for example, I don't have to second guess what you're thinking or what you're looking at. I know because you've already said, I'm watching the pedestrians on the left side of the road. I passed the cyclist a half a block back. They're gonna be coming up. I know that you're aware of your surroundings when you're driving and what you're looking at and what you're thinking. I don't have to guess what you're thinking and what you're doing. So it does, it's, it's a lot less work for me as the other person sitting in the other lane. And especially for CDL people, uh, Wendy, for example, who's going for air brakes, you know, talk through it, talk what you, do what you do. When you're sitting in the cab of the vehicle, whether you're sitting in the bus or you're sitting in the cab of the truck, you've got to work through the pre-trip inspection. You've got to, you know, build air up, air pressure up. And you're saying I'm building air pressure up because I'm going to test the maximum pressure of the governor. I'm going to pump down to above 80 pounds per square inch. And then I'm going to throttle up and I'm going to make sure that the needles are rising. Therefore, I know that the governor has put the compressor back into the cut-in phase and is building air pressure. All right, and then I'm gonna pump down below 60. I'm gonna make sure the low air warning comes on. It's both audible and visual, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna do all that talking through. Some of the pre-trip inspection, some of the driving test is easier because you're reacting and responding, or not reacting, you're reading and responding to what's going on in your driving environment. In other cases, you're simply doing the pieces that you have to do. The in-cab air brake inspection piece is straight memorization. Other parts of it, not so much. All right, uh, Wendy, I learn better by seeing and doing as well, hence the YouTube searches. Yes, and and that's an excellent point of what Wendy just said, that she's a visual learner. And this, for those of you who are instructing, and Sam will say this as well, Tim instructs as well, but Tim's not here, he's gone for dinner, I missed him going. Uh, and uh, Goose, some of the other driving instructors, other people who are instructing or the mentors who might be here on the channel or you're watching on the replay is, I lost my train of thought. Right, visual learners. <laughs> Figure out what kind of learner your student is. Is your student an audible learner? Is they Are they a tactile, uh, kinesthetic learner? Do they have to touch stuff and, and manipulate it and work stuff, switches and headlights and those types of things on the vehicle? Or are they an auditory learner? Do they Can they just listen to something and then get it? Like listen to a podcast and then get what they need to hear uh, for the purposes of the information. So for example, uh, you know, they can put the practice driving test questions on a podcast or on audio and they can listen to that and they will learn what they need to do for the purposes of the driver's test. So figure out what kind of learner you are and that will help the instructor or the instructor needs to figure out what kind of learner the student is because that will help you in terms of, uh, you know, absorbing the information that you need to absorb for whatever skill that you're learning uh, to do, right? And it's the same thing with me. Uh, you know, I'm learning Final Cut Pro all the time. It's software that I use for editing my videos. I'm always watching videos, right? I'm sitting with the kids, and I mean, this is the other great thing about having the holder in the car. I'm sitting waiting for my kids who are doing sports and those types of things, and I sit in the car and I watch YouTube videos on how to make my videos better, right? How to edit videos better, how to edit my videos faster, how to speed up my workflow, and those types of things. So I'm a visual, audible learner, and this is the terrific thing about audio, our videos and YouTube and all those types of things, okay? And Corey's put up the video for on talking to yourself and passing your driver's test, so that'll help you out as well. 
Uh, Tyler, Canada's worst drivers. Uh, Scott used a friend's identity while he was drunk and speeding at a, a lunatic rate of speed. Uh, yeah, crazy. Uh, Wendy, I've just been looking at any CDL YouTube video so that it's actually how I found about the training requirements. Okay, awesome. So like I said, I'll have to have a look at that and, and, and get myself up to speed on that. Uh, Crystal, my dad said I did really good on my driving practice today. Plus on the way home, I started to pick more speed like an actual road. The only thing I need to practice is turning into a parking spot. And yeah, that's going to be, uh, you know, just doing some slow speed maneuvers and those types of things. Uh, the other thing, Crystal, you might want to do is maybe work with some pylons to do some of the slow speed maneuvers and just get used to how the vehicle uh, responds and how it moves and the turning radius and those types of things. And all of that will really help you out because there's quite a bit of like when you're going at trying to move into a parking space or move into your garage or those types of things. There is a lot of off tracking that you're dealing with with your vehicle. So know that for the purposes of doing slow speed maneuvers. But the last piece about doing slow speed maneuvers, as I say, slow speed maneuvers are to driving what scales are to music or what drills are to sports, right? We do like, as most of you know, I train and practice at Jiu Jitsu. We do drills all the time. We do shrimping. We do other types of passing the guard drills. Uh, we do, you know, breaking the grips drills and all those types of things. Uh, <laughs> what what did one of the brown belts say one day? He said, drillers make killers. Uh, and, you know, you've got to practice the basics. You've got to fun practice the fundamentals. And when it comes to driving, the fundamentals are slow speed maneuvers. So if you practice those you are going to become a better driver overall. I cannot emphasize it enough. I cannot stress that enough. Slow speed maneuvers. Corey's put up the uh, video again for uh, hitting the cones, uh, figuring out where your blind areas are around your vehicle. And know the biggest blind area is going to be to the rear of the vehicle. Your second biggest blind area is going to be the passenger's side of the vehicle. So know all of that for the purposes of passing your driver's test. Uh, road skills. So for the purposes of going in and doing your driver's test, uh, make sure that when you get ready to go in and do your driver's test on the day of your driver's test, good night's sleep, have something to eat in the morning. Don't go in without having breakfast or, you know, because you don't want your tummy growling when you're going in. Make sure that if you have, wear prescription glasses, make sure you have glasses, sunglasses as well. If it's a sunny day, make sure you have those ready. Uh, make sure you have your driver's license. Make sure you have money with you because you, there is a cost of taking your driver's test. There's a cost for administrating your, uh, administering your license uh, after you pass your driver's test. And the day, the night before you go in for your driver's test, make sure you do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle. Make sure everything's working. Make sure that the lights are all working, the turn signals, the brake lights, the license plates are attached. You have the insurance and registration documents in the glove box. As Epic mentioned previously, in some of the states in the U.S., if your vehicle isn't clean, they're going to deny your driver's test because of the whole COVID protocols and those types of things. So, you know, make sure you take all the fast food wrappers out of the footwells, maybe even take it down to one of your local car washes and get it washed and vacuumed out so that it's nice and clean. As well, make sure that the seat belt is working on the passenger side. Make sure that the seat is secure. Uh, and make sure the horn works because they're going to check all of that stuff in their mini pre-trip inspection before they take you out on your driver's test. Make sure all of that stuff is working. As I said, make sure you have prescription glasses if they're required for the purposes of your driver's test and sunglasses as well. The myth that you can't wear sunglasses on a driver's test is bunk. If it's sunny out and you need to wear sunglasses, wear sunglasses for the purposes of your driver's test. And there was one other piece that I wanted to say to you about your driver's test. So show up 20 to 30 minutes early back into the parking space at the test center unless signs prohibit you from doing that. That way you can just drive out and you can be good and comfortable. You don't have to back out of the parking space. So back into the parking space. Corey's put up the video for the pre-trip inspection for going down for your driver's test. So that's going to help you out as well. Lamb sauce. Does your gym practice judo takedowns too or just strictly groundwork? Uh, Lamb sauce, no, we, we have a number of people in the jiu-jitsu club who do judo, so we do some of the judo takedowns as well. Uh, and I'm not even going to try and 
say what they are because they're all in Japanese and I would mess it up, but we do some of the judo takedowns as well. Uh, Wendy, do you have any advice on remembering all the numbers so far as the air pressures that kind of scares me all that? I can't, won't remember or mix them up. Okay, so Wendy, if you attach the numbers in cab to what you're doing and what you're testing in cab, it's going to be easy to remember the numbers. So remember, there's only five tests in cab uh, for the pre-trip inspection. If you can remember those, that's easy, okay? So the first test, uh, the minimum and maximum pressure for the governor. Is it kicking in, is it kicking out? Okay, low air warning. Do the emergency brakes come on when the pressure is between 20 and 45? The compressor buildup test, and then you have the leak test. So if you write those five tests down, and actually, Corey will put up the link for you to go over to the Smart Drive Test website, and there's a checklist that you can download that will tell you those five tests that you need to do in cab. And once you know what those five in cab tests are, then you can write the numbers down for the state of New Jersey because they might be slightly different than what I would tell you, but usually the governor, minimum pressure for the governor has to kick in before 80. Low air warning is 60, above 60. Emergency brakes are gonna come on between 20 and 45. Most states, and I think the state of New Jersey is the same, the compressor buildup test is between uh, 50 and 90 pounds within three minutes at a high idle. Go to maximum pressure, governor cutout, and then you have to do your leak test. So you're at maximum pressure, you hold for one minute, and in one minute you can't lose more than three pounds uh, in the air brake system. So those are the tests that you have to do in, um, in cab. And once you get those tests, if you can say, okay, I'm testing the governor maximum pressure, I'm testing the low air warning system, testing that the emergency brakes activate, then you can put the numbers to them and that's gonna be easier for you to memorize. As well, put them on some flashcards and all of this stuff is in the ebook that I suggested you have a look at and that will really help you out with your air brakes as well, okay? 25, on a red light, if there are no cars, are you allowed to turn right? Yes, you can turn right on a red light if, if the traffic isn't busy. Uh, if the traffic's busy, you can wait for the green light, but the only places that you can't turn right on a red light, as I found out with Sam, and have a look at the video of me failing the driver's test in the state of New York, uh, in the Bronx there, is uh, the five boroughs of New York City. So Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. You can't turn right on a red light in those boroughs. And the island of Montreal are the only places in North America that I'm aware of, unless there are signs prohibiting you make a right on a red, red light, you can turn right on a red light. Uh, Sarah, do you recommend to take your license test at the DMV or with a driving instructor that you have been doing lessons with? Uh, Sarah, you, it's, it's whatever you're more comfortable with, Sarah. Uh, most of the time you have to go to the DMV. I only know a couple of states, the state of Oregon, Idaho, I think, and Texas that actually allow driving schools to administer the DMV test. Otherwise, you have to go to the DMV. So I don't know too many driving, too many states that allow third-party testing. So I don't know if you're in one of those states that will allow you to do third-party testing. But it's really up to your decision about what you feel more comfortable with. Uh, it, I don't think the test is going to be any different. Uh, Kenya, where can I rent the orange poles for slow, uh, slow speed maneuvers? Tried looking but can't find any places. Uh, Kenya, any industrial rental place is going to have those delineators or pylons. Uh, or uh, just type rental equipment into Google where you live and uh, you'll be able to find those delineators and those types of things. <laughs> Sam says, you got that right. Uh, New York City rules, man, that's life. Yes, it is, that's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Uh, uh, need to pass this so I can start a new job. Yes, Wendy, you're gonna do awesome. And if you have any questions, just send me, shoot me an email. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Yankee, my friend, how are you? Uh, I noticed both judo and jiu-jitsu have similar moves in terms of arm lock positions. Does jiu-jitsu borrow a bit from judo or is it the other way around? Uh, Yankee, I just I think there's a fair bit of crossover between the two for sure, absolutely. Uh, it depends on you know it depends on the club that you're in whether they have some judo stuff or those types of things. We uh, we have one gentleman 
who is a brown belt in judo so he brings some of that stuff in and then as well one of our instructors as well has a background in judo so you know all of that stuff is going on but it's all good fun all good fun um okay uh epic uh tips were discussed are helpful to anyone going for cdl cars and motorcycle licenses not sure if you're familiar with the process of adding motorcycle endorsement to a car license uh Epic, you don't have to take a driver's test. You can just add an endorsement to your car license. I did not know that uh, because he, every place that I've been in, you have to take a separate test for your motorcycle license. Uh, Sarah, you're in South Carolina. Okay. Um, Sarah, I would need to look that up for you. If you could send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com then I'll look that up for you and let you know about the state of California, whether they're doing third party testing. Uh, I wasn't aware that South Carolina was doing that. So yeah, thanks for that information. Uh, JQ, uh, thanks for helping me pass my test. Binge watch many of your videos. Congratulations, JQ, on passing your driver's test. That is absolutely awesome. Congratulations. Uh, where did you go to celebrate passing your driver's test? Awesome, awesome news there. Abu uh, Muhammad, thank you for that. All right. And Wendy, you said you're a bit nervous. That's okay. It happens to the best of us. Uh, Mallory said you want your car to look presentable when you're going for your driver's test. Absolutely. And the other piece is don't get daunted by the driving instructor. If you're going with a driving school to take your driving test, ask your instructor whether he or she did a pre-trip inspection because you know unfortunately not all driving instructors are going to do a pre-trip inspection on their vehicle before they go down for a driver's test so ask him or her if they did that because you don't want the embarrassing moment of the examiner coming out doing their mini pre-trip inspection on your vehicle and you got a brake light out because if there's a brake light out on your vehicle, it's something that's easily fixed. You can usually fix that in about 10 minutes or just take it to a shop and get them to fix it for you. So know that, don't be denied your driver's test because there's something unsafe with your vehicle, like the seatbelt on the passenger side doesn't work, or you know you have a brake light out or a tail light or your windshield wipers don't work. Last note on your driver's test, be able to turn on the high-low beam headlights be able to turn on the defrost, especially if you're taking your driver's test in the winter time, and be able to turn on the windshield wipers, okay? All of these things, if you are not able to turn on those secondary controls for the purposes of your driver's test, again, it tells the driving examiner that you don't have a lot of experience in driving because you haven't driven at night, because you don't know how to turn on the high-low head, uh, high low beam headlights, uh, you can't keep the windshield clear because you can't turn on the defrost, or, you can't turn on the windshield wipers if it's going to rain or you got snow or slush or sleet or those types of things, especially if you're taking your driver's test in the winter time and you get a lot of slush on the road. So <laughs> my friend, Tim, hello, my friend, man, that was a quick dinner. That was a quick dinner for sure. Harry, I watched tons of your videos, but I live in Canada. Awesome. And yeah, Harry, we can definitely help you out with that as well. Wendy, will you save this live so I can rewatch for the links and emails? Uh, yes, Wendy, it'll definitely stay up here. So uh, it'll be here on the channel. Uh, Juzu, uh, my dad said recently they don't slow the car at appropriate distance before the stop sign like he felt could potentially pass the stop sign, but I make sure I stop for the sign each time. Uh, yes, uh, Juju, just make sure that you're slowing down a bit farther back and then kind of creep up to the stop sign. Yes, because yes, you can get points off for that if you're just coming up and jamming on the brakes. So make sure that you stop back and then kind of creep up to where you actually want to stop. All right. Uh, so we're going to leave it there for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks so much for your questions, your participation. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment down in the comment section. If you're watching on the replay or you just thought of something that you didn't think of right now, uh, more than happy to help you out, more than happy to answer your questions and help you to pass your driver's test first time, become a safer, smarter driver, or get your truck or bus license to start some new money because as you know the driver shortage going on right now there's definitely lots of jobs out there uh, for truck drivers and employment in that area so if you passed your driver's test in the last couple of weeks congratulations on passing your driver's test if you have a test coming up in the next couple of weeks uh, good luck on that and remember
pick the best answer. Not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.